Class C motorhome, under 25 foot, optional Ford or Chevy chassis, slide out bed, and huge outside storage. Folks, this is the 2021 Thor Daybreak 22 DB. The 22 DB is a really popular floor plan, a popular option because it offers a lot of versatility. Uh, if you're looking for something, you know, just an excellent traveler, this is a great one for it because again, it's a little bit smaller. You know, you're on the Ford chassis, you're about 24 foot on the Chevy chassis, which this one is on, uh, you're 24 foot, seven inches. So you're still staying under that 25 foot mark, easy to drive and has a slide out bed in the back, giving you a little bit of a walk around option instead of a corner bed, like a lot of times you get, you know, when you're kind of in this length. And then it also has the cab over bunk. So it offers a lot of different sleeping, whether it's just you or, you know, you and a partner, or if you have a couple people that are traveling with you. Uh, the other thing that's really nice about it is you do get a good kitchen setup. We'll see that right here. Uh, you have the press laminate countertops, which is an upgrade over T-mold. Um, you can see that you have the pop-up countertop extension here as well. So, you know, if you're doing some cooking, it does block the entrance a little bit, but as long as you're not going in and out, that is uh, crucial because that way you can still use the sink and use the cooktop and still have prep space. If you don't need the sink, well, that's great. Or if you just need half of it like this, which is, you know, a lot of times what you'll do. So you have this prep space plus this pop-out. Um, you know, again, you can see that these can be used for prep. Because it is the pressed laminate, it also allows you to undermount that stainless steel bowl, which not only gives it a cleaner look, but it makes it easier to clean. You don't have like a ridge or anything where the sink is. Uh, it just sits right underneath like that. And if you take a note, if you take a look, you can see how deep that sink is. And that's also an important thing when looking at a sink in an RV. Sometimes manufacturers will try to make a little bit shallower sink just because it's a little bit less expensive or, you know, they don't want to have to fight with drawer space, things like that. But I personally really like a deep sink because that way I can use residential pots and pans if I want, can stack a few things in there. You know, if I want to, um, you know, have go through like a meal without having to wash dishes immediately, I have the ability to do that. It's also a high rise pullout faucet. Talking about washing dishes, that pullout you will definitely find extremely helpful. Big window all the way across. I like this too. Instead of having a backsplash, um, I personally like the window. In a Class C or any motorhome, I want to try to bring in as much light as possible because you have a lot of uppers, a lot of cabinets. And so, you know, unlike in uh, like travel trailers and fifth wheels, you know, where you have bigger windows and some of the living spaces, you don't get quite as much in a motorhome. So I like, especially in a Class C, so I like when they, you know, have big windows like this in a lot of your common spaces. Also, your three burner cooktop recessed with the glass cover. This, of course, folds up and back just like so, nice and easy. The, you have the three burners. The front one is high output. You can see the knobs light up. There's also an oven underneath. So if you want to, you know, bake some casseroles or something, you can do that. And you get the storage underneath for pots and pans. So you kind of get everything all in one. As we take a look at the space underneath the sink itself, so you'll see right there, that one just kind of drops or uh, folds down like that. This one's a little bit shorter. And again, as I mentioned, part of the reason for that is because you have such a deep sink. So you have to sacrifice a little bit of something. And for this one, it's a little bit of drawer depth. But underneath that, you have a nice big drawer here, perfect for all of your flatware and towels, whatever else you need. And the very bottom drawer is also deep here. So, you know, it's just an overall big drawer. So you have some of those larger items. You want to be able to stack towels up, things like that, hand towels. This gives you the ability to do it. You want more pots and pans because they won't all fit in there, which is probably the case. You have a nice big drawer here for some of those. Coming around the other side, I want to show you this as well. So fire extinguisher, hopefully you never have to use it, but always good to know where it's at. And then some of your, um, your other hookups. So electrical outlet here, your lights, battery disconnect. And then this one, this one is prepped for solar on the roof. So if you want to put, you know, a hundred watt solar panel up there, it's nice and easy to do so. All the wiring's already done. The controller is already installed for you. Taking a look at some of the storage here. I'll open this up if we can see it. Uh, let me, it's Velcroed in there, but this allows you to um, control your TV. So that's what that is right there. It's also a good spot for any of your other uh, auxiliary equipment, right? So if you want like a Blu-ray player or something like that, you can put it right up here. You can see the HDMI cables and everything are up there. So that's going to be your entertainment compartment for all of your TVs. Also, your main uppers in your kitchen, they want like a frosted glass, which I, you know, I like that. I'll break up the wood look a little bit. You'll see the shelves are adjustable, which is fantastic. So you can move those kind of however you want. 
Also, storage above the microwave. Because it opens up, it, it's strut supported, single, easy, one hand operation. You don't have to sit here and hold it with one hand while trying to reach in there with the other. Microwave right there. Uh, we talked about the cooktop, but also you have the fridge freezer. Open that guy up for you Whoop, so you can take a look. Um, so good space. This one does run off both propane and electric, has automatic switch over. Right down underneath, you can see here your furnace, direct vent furnace. You also have a drawer there and Take a look at that, folks, a spot for the trash can. If you've seen my videos before, you know how important this is for me. It's one of those little things that I just love when manufacturers do because, you know, when I camp, I hate having to tie a trash bag to a pull because, you know, it's generally something like this where it has to be like a high pull and it's just in the way, it smells, I want it tucked away, and they give me the capability to do that in this Class C. Also, I want to show you this. So, not huge storage, but good storage nonetheless, and that is adjustable. So, you have a pantry right there for a lot of your food, very easy access. We'll get to this one in just a second when we're done with the uh, bedroom, but first, I want to hit the bathroom. So, come on in here with me, and let's take a seat on the toilet. We'll give it the old toilet test. Um, this is one of those things that's always pretty important just because, you know, sometimes when manufacturers, manufacturers are designing, they just don't think about taller people sitting on a toilet. Now, I'm six foot, um, you know, so I'm kind of uh, right in the middle, right? You know, not too short, not too tall. Um, but as far as toilet space, I'm good right here. You know, I, I have excellent shoulder room. I have good leg room. It's a porcelain bowl, which, you know, in, in a motorhome in a Class C, it better be. Uh, it absolutely is. That way it'll stay looking nice, longer, much easier to clean. You can also see right over here, uh, you have your mirrored medicine cabinet. Um, on that, th this one has a, a 360 roof vent. So that's for like uh, some of your black tank odors so you don't get smells coming back up. Um, it's a pretty nice thing to have on there. And then you can see right here, of course, your uh, plumbing, your P-trap. Then you also have storage underneath. So, you know, you can probably fit like a black tank chemical bottle or something here. Or if you have a bag of like the biodegradables, you can just toss them right under there as well as some extra toilet paper. And your toilet paper holder is over here. Of course, the other side is your electrical outlet. You also have the pressed countertops in here. They didn't chintz out. They didn't go to T-mold. I like that. And they give you an upgraded stainless steel bowl, the hand faucet right there. You have a couple different robe hooks. You'll have one located on the wall. You will have two more on the door itself. So plenty of space to hang up your towels. And as for the shower, a couple things I want to mention here. One, uh, the shower base is very sturdy. Now that may sound uh, silly, but if you, you know, if you're out there shopping, you're RV shopping, I'm telling you, get in some showers. Um, unfortunately, sometimes Manufacturers don't reinforce them as well as they should, in my opinion. Um, Thor is one of the manufacturers that do a really, really good job. So you can get in here. I mean, you can step all around. It doesn't make noises. You don't feel like the bottom's going to fall out on you, which I like. Um, as far as height, they put a skylight here, and it is definitely necessary. Um, without it, you will see, you know, I, I, can't, I can't stand up straight. Um, with the skylight, you know, the curtain will be closed right here. Uh, it does kind of force me this way a little. It, it's not the best shower situation in the world. Um, you know, it, it, you're not going to be super comfortable in here. It'll be something that's going to have to be kind of quick. All right? I can stand up, but I'm kind of out in the curtain. It might be wise to invest in like a um, like a, a bent bar, or that you know, I think we we sell bars in the store that kind of move in and out, just to give you a little more space, get that curtain away just a little bit. Um, you know, might be might be something you look at, maybe a little bit longer curtain to accommodate that bent bar. But either way, it, it, you know, you can get the job done. I'm not gonna, you know, I wouldn't take a 20 minute shower or anything, which if you've been RVing, you know you can't anyway, generally because of the, the water heater capabilities. Uh, so, you know, it'll be a quick in and out thing. Taking a look at the bedroom. This one, as I mentioned, has the slide out queen bed. Now, it does give you the walk around capability you can see here. It, it's not super great, you know, I mean, as far as space, I mean, it's pretty tight. But the thing I do like about it is that you can still crawl in from the bottom and both people have that ability. So whereas when you have a corner bed, someone has to crawl over someone else to get out. Like you can't get out at the foot of the bed. Here, at least you can get out on the foot if you have to go use the bathroom. Big window in the back. It's also an emergency exit. Again, hopefully you never have to use that. But if you do, it is very large. It's very easy to access right from the bedroom. Storage all the way across the top. That's great storage, plus some LED lights under there. Windows on both sides that open so you can get that cross breeze at night. Right behind me here is a TV hookup. So if you do want TV in the bedroom, you, you have that there. Uh, the other TV, of course, was above the bunk area. I'll show you that in just a little bit. And then the control for the slide here in the bedroom is located back here. You also have the thermostat. Now that will only control the heat. There is a roof mounted AC unit, of course, but that the control for that is on the AC itself. You do have mirrored uh, wardrobe. So, you know, if you want to take a look at yourself or whatever, you can do that. 
Um, you will see right there is your hanging rod. Also, you have the secondary access from the main living area. I'll show you that in a moment. And there is a drawer. Sammy, want to show the drawer real quick. That's a good size drawer. I don't want people missing that. So you can see the nice big deep drawer right there. Uh, electrical outlet and USB port there too. So if you need to charge cell phones or if you have a CPAP machine, that's where you'll plug it in at. Making our way back out. So I showed you the adjustable shelves in the pantry, but then you have this right here. So this again is a mirror, but when I open it up, boom, it gets you right into that wardrobe. So you do have a couple different ways to access that storage area. Big storage all the way across the top. And once again, you will see it is strut supported. I love that they did that. Not all manufacturers do. Um, but you know, it makes it easy to be able to access whatever you need to in there. We take a look underneath the cabinets, you'll see a couple things. You have some LED lights there, speakers, as well as dual USB ports in case you need to charge anything. Now, when I take a seat here in the dinette, what you, you'll notice a couple different things. Um, one, there's plenty of room here for another person, and that's important uh, as far as riders. You know, if you have some additional riders, you can have two people on this side, and both people will have seat belts. Uh, some cup holders there too. Also, I have good space from my uh, ever-growing midsection to the table. That's not, you know, not an issue there. And I have good space from the table to my legs. Now, this is a dream-style dinette, so it does drop down into a bed very easily. If you take a look right down underneath, you have this lever right here. You simply flip that lever, and then that just pushes right down. Obviously, my leg's in the way, and I'd want to move out of there. Uh, but you're able to just push that down, and then you can throw the cushions on top, uh, and that will... Um, get, make a, a nice sleeping space for, um, you know, an additional person. So as I said, you can see the seatbelts right over there. I don't think the 22 has them over here. Let me verify. Well, hold on. I could be wrong. I don't want to lie to you. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, so there we go. So you have a seatbelt over here as well. So, um, so you can have a, a rider on either side, it looks like. So that's how they set this one up. So you have one rider on that side, one rider on this side. Everyone's got seatbelts. You're riding nice and safely. Um, again, big window right here. So that's, if, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of big windows in this RV. You had the big one in the kitchen, the big one in the bedroom, the big one right here in the main living area. And as I mentioned, I, I like that because it just lets a ton of natural light into this camper. You'll also see storage right here. Nice and easy to access. Just pull open drawer. And right down there is an electrical outlet. So if you need to work while you're on the road, plug in a laptop, tablet, you have the capability to do that. Let's kind of talk a little bit about the cab and we'll start with the cab over bunk. One of the things that I love about Daybreak is the fact that this is a 500 pound bunk capacity. Um, that's pretty, pretty good for the industry. A lot of times they'll be like 300 to 350, uh, but 500 is excellent because uh, generally speaking, you can have two adults fit in this bed. I mean, obviously, you know, that's not always the case, but um, the fact it's a 500 pound weight capacity definitely gives you more room than if it was like a 350 like some other manufacturers have. And all of these are removable. If you don't want the bunk, if you just want extra storage space, I mean, even the sides here, you can take all this out and you'll just have storage all the way up here. Um, and the other thing I like about these, this, the sides is they're like foot lockers. So, you know, you can store stuff in there during travel, that way it doesn't fall off, super handy. Of course, the window up there, the ladder, and then this swing out TV. So this will go up against the wall. If you're up here, you can watch it or obviously swing it out if you wanna watch while you're at the dinette. Let's hop down into the chassis. As I mentioned, this one you can get on either chassis, the Ford or the Chevy. Um, the ones being built now, of course, will be on the, the new Ford chassis. Uh, the Chevy chassis here, a lot of people like it because it affords you more leg room. If you're a taller person, I do recommend sitting in both to see what you prefer. Um, you know, some people are just diehard Chevy or diehard Ford people, and so they go, you know, choose based upon that. But I do recommend sitting in both, uh, you know, giving both a test drive. If you haven't driven both, see what works for you. I think they're both great, but, uh, you know, you want to make sure you get your uh, personal opinion on it. Of course, you have plenty of cup holders here as well. And as I said, this is, this is very comfortable. I don't feel closed in. I don't feel claustrophobic. I've definitely been in some, you know, where, you, where you're way up here, the seat's up, and, you know, your legs are jammed the whole time. Now, it's a motorhome. Chances are, especially in one like this, you're going to be traveling a lot, right? That's why you probably bought a little bit smaller class C, plan on doing a lot of traveling. You want to make sure you're going to be comfortable and not feel like you're jammed up in that seat. Last thing I want to show you folks is the AC, and that is right here. As I mentioned, the controls are right there on it. Very easy to operate. 
Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2021 Thor Daybreak 22DB. As I mentioned, this one is on the Chevy chassis. That's your six liter V8 putting out 323 horsepower, 373 foot pounds of torque. Making our way back, of course, you have the extended mirrors here to give you that visibility to be able to see beyond the house portion. Also the front, you'll notice the front cap. Not only does that add a little bit of insulation in there, so that way, you know, because people are sleeping up here and you want to make sure that it's going to be as insulated as possible. Last thing you want is that heat beating down, warming it up. So it gives you that insulation barrier. It's also nice and easy to clean. That's going to be a big deal because obviously you're, uh, as you're traveling down, a bunch of bugs and everything else will be smattered on there. You want it easier to clean. You will see the running board. So it's a quick step into the driver and passenger seat. Our main entrance will be located here with the grab handle. Open that up for you. Your battery compartment will be located right there in the step. So if you're wondering where it's at, that's where you'll find it. You'll also see the power awning. Touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to go back in. LED light strip on there. The thing I really like about this one, the Solera, is it is an extremely easy pitch. If you take a look, I can bend it just like that to be able to adjust the pitch for water runoff or if I want to adjust the entire awning so that you have more shade from the sun. The other thing that's really nice about this one is that you don't have to readjust it. If I pull it down like this and I forget that I have a different pitch and I roll it up, it'll fix itself when it rolls up. All right, so we take a look right here, you'll see the chassis is upfitted from Moride. And that's a big deal, right? Because they are a licensed upfitter from the start all the way to the finish, which is one of the big reasons that Thor uses them. They will actually balance your drive shaft to within tenths of a, a, a hundredths of an inch to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Uh, that's one of those things when you have a motorhome, if people are doing the upfitting and they're not licensed, you can get shakes and vibrations. I'm sure you've had that experience. When you're out there test driving an RV, you start to hear a lot of squeaks, you feel shakes going down the road. That's not an experience you want, and that's something that Thor eliminates by using Moride. You can see here, electrical outlets, in case you need to plug anything in, nice, easy access there. So we make our way around to the back. Something else I really like about this one is the fact, and this comes with uh, all day brakes, uh, well, that are on the Ford or Chevy chassis, is that you have an 8,000 pound hitch. Most manufacturers will give you a 5,000 pound, Thor gives you the 8,000. Why is that a big deal? A couple reasons. One, most manufacturers aren't qualified to put that on. Uh, they have to go through a lot of different licensing to be able to use an 8,000 pound hitch, and that gives you the capability to tow larger things. Now, when you have a smaller motorhome like this, right, whether it's a 22 foot or a 26 foot, it's gonna be the same chassis. You know, the, the engine isn't changing, but by being smaller, it weighs less, meaning that you'll have a more, uh, essentially more power, you'll be able to tow more with it. So you'll really be able to utilize uh, that 8,000 pound hitch there. Seven way, um, or sorry, the, the four way is already built in. You can see that there. So if you have a boat or anything you need to plug in, good to go, spots for chains all set up. They put grip tape on the bumper. It's a painted bumper, so that way it stays in nice shape. The grip tape, of course, you're not gonna slip if it's wet. That'll get you up onto the ladder. It is a fully walkable roof, so that way you need to get up there and do some inspections. I always recommend getting up on your roof at least once a year, probably twice. If you don't want to get up on the roof of your motorhome, I completely understand you're not alone. Just bring it by a Camping World or Gander RV. We'll be happy to get a technician up there and do the inspection for you. Also right up in the center is a backup camera. So as you're backing up, you can see what's behind you. If you're like me, I love my wife to death. She is not the best spotter in the world. Uh, you know, she, she generally doesn't help me very much. She's in a spot I can't see her. With that backup camera, that definitely will assist not just in seeing your spotter, but also making sure you're not going to back up into anything. The slide out uses the Schwintech worm gear driven system. Excellent slide out system. Uh, what I always tell people is when you are using this system, you want to make sure you have good voltage. So either your batteries are topped off, you have shore power, or you have the generator running. So, um, you know, if, if you're at the campsite, you have shore power, great, good to go. If you're not, I do recommend firing up that generator, waiting for it to kick out, you know, wait a few seconds, and then run your slide in and out. Also, you can push and hold the button on these, and uh, there's two motors on the Schwintech slide, right? So when you push and hold it, it will sync those motors up. So when it comes in, when it's all the way in, just hold it for a couple seconds. You'll hear those motors sync up. Same thing when you extend it, and you will, you will uh, go through the life of your RV with, more than likely without having any problems at all. Probably one of the best uh, slide systems out there for a lightweight slide. Dropping down underneath that, you will see a very large storage area here too. This is the majority of your storage on the 22DB. 
This obviously lets you fit in some bigger items, which is something you're going to want. And being on a smaller motorhome, storage like that is huge. You'll have, of course, your termination right down underneath, both black and gray tank valves there. Uh, it's also worth pointing out, if we take a look at the top of the slide real quick, uh, what I want to tell you about this is that it has a slide topper on it from the manufacturer. Why that's important is because if you're parked under a tree, you know, you'll have sticks fall, you may have pine cones fall, and when you go to put your slide in, if you're not careful and you don't have a topper on there, those can get into the top of that, that slide seal and they will, can cause damage, or if they sit there over the winter, then your slide is or your seal can get deformed, then you can start getting water, ice, other things in there, and that's not something you want to happen. So having the topper will help prevent that because if it will sit right on top of that uh, slide topper, when you move the slide in, all of that will just fall right off. This is your fresh tank fill. If you're going somewhere, doing some boondocking, you don't have water connection, you wanna make sure to fill up the fresh tank, that's the place to do it. City water inlet right underneath, and then the black tank flush here. And that's also super handy, because normally what you'd wanna do is take a hose and stick it down a toilet to wash out your black tank. With this, you take the hose, you just screw it right in there. That black tank has sprayers built in to wash it out for you. And again, the reason that's important, and I do recommend doing it every time you're done camping, is because sometimes you'll get tissue and other uh, matter that may stick to your, uh, your sensors, your probes inside your black tank, and then you'll get false readings. So in order to make sure everything's working properly, you have the black tank flush to wash it out. Cable inlet there, 30 amp power cord. Down underneath that is the generator. Cummins own in 4,000 watt generator. You can fire that bad boy up. It'll run everything in this coach, uh, including your TVs, your AC, microwave, everything that you want. And then your propane fill will be right here. This one does have a 40 pound propane tank. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2021 Thor Daybreak 22DB on the Chevy chassis. If you're interested in this motorhome and you'd like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what they failed, or if you were designing this RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching, folks. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.